Thank you, Christine. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Gonna, good morning. We're going to have a small group, so we're going to try to be real informal this morning and just kind of walk our way through what's going to be a pretty quick agenda for us. Um, the goal of our meeting is contained right in the title, which makes it really easy. We're going to recognize our employers that have um, embraced the registered apprenticeship model. So um, we want it to be informal. I noticed that the recording light is on, so we should mention that out loud in words is what we're trained to do so that everybody knows that we are recording. We're going to hang on just a second here. Christine, who's working in the background to help us well, she actually has used the term, so I'll use it, but she's serving as our concierge this morning again, and she's going to send Russ a link um, to hopefully get him in here pretty directly. So, Barbie, good morning. I'm Scott, and is it Amanda? Yes, Amanda. Okay, thank you. I don't want to use the wrong name. So good morning. Good morning. Um, I don't know if I've met you before, but you look familiar maybe from the Michigan Works Conference presentation um, that you did with Evelyn. So that would make sense to me. Yep, I was on that. All right, thanks. Thanks for your support there as well. And thank you for joining us today also. Morning, You're Russ. Welcome. If you said good morning, Russ, you might be muted. And actually, if you're still saying good morning or something, you still might be muted. And still no here. Now can you hear me? Sure can. You said that a little bit strange. Okay. Usually, usually they say, can you hear me now? And you said, now can you hear me? So it's like the reverse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like that right now. <laughs> well, I try. I, I thought it was, it was a lot of so Russ, your audio is a little bit broken up this morning. I don't know why. Usually yours is really clear, uh, but it's breaking up just a little bit. So if you can focus towards your mic, if you know where it's at, that might help. But you're uh, off. Okay. So, so is that helping? Yes, that's better, I think. Uh, let me just go down here and see what... what... Okay. Yeah, it's just a little bit. Yeah, connection is still breaking up, so you might have to speak loudly if you can. Okay, I will. All right, thank you. Uh, okay. All right. So I'm going to share with us uh, an agenda for the session today. Again, we're going to keep it very informal. And our goal today is to recognize two employers who have joined us, um, unless there's another one that I'm not familiar with. Is there another employer that's also with us? I realize we're all kind of employers, but we're looking for ones that have started uh, registered apprenticeship programs to recognize this morning. Okay, so we'll go with two. Thank you for joining us. And um, it is National Apprenticeship Week. And so we're pretty honored to be able to spend a few minutes with you during National Apprenticeship Week to celebrate and recognize your efforts as an employer to use the registered apprenticeship model. We have a agenda that we put together, which I will share with you now. And in the agenda, it kind of lays out for us um, 
kind of the the sequence of events this morning. And I'm going to do a quick run through of the agenda. Um, we're going to actually add a reading of the proclamation that Governor Whitmer um, extended to the state through a press release on Monday. And then we'll ask our director, Russ Davis, to provide a few opening remarks this morning. And then we're just going to briefly recognize each of you. We want to make sure that we've got names, locations, ask you to share just a little bit about your programs. We captured a few comments from you um, earlier when you registered. And so um, we'll just shine the spotlight on you for a moment. Then we'll uh, have Russ offer additional congratulations and any closing comments. It won't take as long as we have drafted the agenda to take, and that's okay. And then the follow-up to this will be a press release that's going to come out of the Department of Labor and Economic Opportunities Office of Communications, and they'll distribute that the same way that we distribute like the announcement for the press release that included Governor Whitmer's proclamation. Any questions about um, the process or the agenda this morning? Hearing none, we'll ask Carrie if you could share the proclamation, please, I'll stop sharing. And if you could share the proclamation, please, and read through that. Um, I'm kind of anxious to see it. Good morning, everyone. Can you see my screen? Not yet, but there's one extra button. Um, and you got to push the little red button in the right-hand corner, unlike Teams. Zoom has that. One more push. There we go. Is that it? That's it. We're looking at it. Great. Right. Right. A little bigger, please. Absolutely. Not to put her on the spot, but thank you, Carrie, for <laughs> being <laughs> willing welcome. to read through that this morning. Yeah, no problem. Okay, State of Michigan Certificate of Proclamation. On behalf of the people of Michigan, I, Gritch and Whitmer, Governor of Michigan do hereby proclaim November 8th through the 14th of 2020 as apprenticeship week. Whereas registered apprenticeship is an elite workforce training model that provides paid relevant work experience, classroom, re, I'm sorry, related classroom instruction and a United States Department of Labor national credential that allows workers to earn a living while acquiring the skills employer demand employers demand in a variety of occupations. And whereas RAs share registered apprentices, share our statewide goal of increasing post-secondary credential attainment to 60% by 2030 to help close the Michigan's, Michigan's widening skills gap. And whereas Michigan is among the national leaders in registered apprenticeship and the state's apprenticeship network continues to work to grow the numbers of opportunities to ensure more students and job seekers gain in-demand skills without extensive tuition debt while employers get the talent they need to grow and thrive. And whereas Michigan is one of the leading states across in the U.S. having more than 1,096 registered apprenticeship program and over 21,075 active apprentices. And whereas organized labor has a long and strong history of promoting, providing, and training the vast majority of apprentices in Michigan. And we are proud that this continues to bring good skills and high paying careers with retirement and other benefits while supporting our efforts to reach the 60 by 30 goal. And whereas the Michigan Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity champions efforts designed to provide a proven system of public private partners to support and operate successful registered apprenticeship programs. And whereas the USDOL awarded the state apprenticeship expansion grants 
to Michigan, including over 14 million in funding to expand registered apprenticeship by over 6,000 new apprentices, including minorities, youth, individuals with disabilities and veterans. And whereas Leo is working across the department to expand registered apprenticeship programs for youth with disabilities by conducting outreach, engaging employers, and developing registered apprenticeship opportunities for careers in information technology, healthcare, and manufacturing. And whereas Leo, in partnership with the USCOL Office of Apprenticeship, has contributed to apprenticeship expansion through support of sector partnerships, employer incentives, and the, and the establishment of the apprenticeship success coordinator function within the Michigan work system, which has resulted in approximately 2,000 new apprentices since 2017. And whereas Michigan has enacted bipartisan legislation to allow more veterans to use GI Bill benefits towards securing RA opportunities, and USDOL, LEO, and Mich the Michigan Department of Military Affairs and other veteran apprenticeship stakeholders work together to expand veteran RA opportunities and network with relevant apprenticeship partners. And whereas Michigan, Michigan's efforts to date have provided a substantial increase in registered apprenticeship diversity, quality, innovation, and expansion resulting in career pathway opportunities for underrepresented, popu underrepresented populations. Now, therefore, I, Gretchen Whitmer, Governor of Michigan, do hereby proclaim November 8th through the 14th, 2020, as Apprenticeship Week in Michigan, as we continue to work towards our statewide goal of increasing post-secondary credential attainment to 60% by 2030. Thank uh, Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Thank you, Carrie. You're Thanks, welcome. Carrie. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, um, and then Russ Davis. Good morning. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, and thanks for recognizing the National Apprenticeship Week. Um, these events are very, very important. Um, just to give you just a little history, I think this is probably our sixth year we've been doing this. Obviously, this uh, year is uh, quite a bit different, but not. It's just as important uh, on the events. Uh, for the past six years, we had close to 1,200 events across the United States um, with national, recognized the National Apprenticeship Week. This year, I got an email out, I think it was, uh, we were off yesterday, Michigan is leading the way right now of 50 events, and that's thanks to all of you. Uh, I have, uh, on Tuesday, I signed a set of standards. I'll be signing another set of standards to uh, Don Troy on Friday. Um, for all of you companies that are coming forward, we welcome you, I look forward to you. Uh, on board for our system. We've got uh, 19,131 registered apprentices. Did 1,336 new apprentices this year, 198 completed, and new companies running out of date. Just to speak to the new companies, uh, probably the last three years. Uh, Michigan's average uh, probably 85 to 90 companies this past fiscal year because of COVID, we only had 38. So the register apprenticeship system for the new companies, uh, just to give you a kind of a little um, paragraph that I read every, uh, generally speaking, every uh, event. Uh, 80 plus years ago, President Franklin Roosevelt signed the law of the National Apprenticeship System, the Signing of the Act, also known as the Fitzgerald Act in honor of its author, Congressman William J. Fitzgerald Connecticut, set in motion an opportunity some 80 years later. Millions of us were the chance to use the earn while you learn strategy to 
prepare for careers in industries that have drive the American economy and support countless American families in their efforts to reach the middle class and American dream. The five core components of ready to apprenticeship to jobs, the on the job learning in a work setting, job related classroom and training at least 144 clock hours of school for a year of apprenticeship, learning with the help of a mentor or a, a training worker. And last but not least, the most important is that industrial recognized credential that's recognized across the United States. Uh, recently, uh, the last month or so, we've had several uh, virtual events supporting the, the Senator Peters Act that changed uh, the addendum to the standards, recognizing the support of veterans that go into the uh, apprenticeships. The world changed our standards to add addendums to sponsor and understand the support for the veterans in the Effective Apprenticeship Act. And so those of you that are starting right now, there will be a denim or a boilerplate that, uh, that the program sponsors the aware of the availability of educational assistance for veteran or other eligible individuals under chapters 30 to 36 of Title 38 United States for the use of connection with race or apprenticeship. Uh, the sponsor is going to make a good faith effort and obtain approval for the educational assistance. And so we really have been promoting the veterans because of the fact we know that we have lots of veterans in Michigan. We give them credit for previous experience. They're, they're great to have on your team. Um, Scott, I think that's all I have this time. For the potential sponsors, we welcome you here today. Each and every sponsor, each and every apprentice is, is very, very important to, to, to us. And that's even those uh, apprenticeships that we have one, two, three apprentices, they all add up. Uh, Michigan has led the way the last few years in Region 5, a 10 region area, as far as uh, uh, race apprenticeships. Um, our team uh, recognized them. Uh, Mark Foster's in Detroit. Uh, Mary Beth Kosky is in Detroit. And Tiffany Clausen is in Battle Creek. I think we have. Mark and Tiffany on the on this call right now, I believe. Is that right? Yes. We're okay, here. great. But uh, so uh, and we'll have uh, Teresa Hill, our assistant in our Detroit office. With that, I will turn it back over to Scott. I'll take any questions. Uh, later on but again uh, welcome sponsors i don't know where you're from right now but we're anxious to hear from you and uh look forward to having you part of the team thank you okay thank you so much russ and your audio was a little bit rough um but we did get much of what you said uh related to the history of registered apprenticeship, the impact to people's lives, the current efforts to uh, recruit and improve the model for use by veterans, uh, which were which is much appreciated, um, the benefits and the introduction of your team. And we're small enough in our group this morning that I think what might be nice is for us just to go around and kind of introduce ourselves. And I probably should have done that up front. We can't always do it on Zoom calls, but it might make sense for today if you have audio and if we can remember to unmute ours. I have a bad habit of leaving mine on, which can also get you in trouble other ways, but... Um, it's because I get tired of people making those words, which now I can read, you know, without even hearing them that says your mute is on. So, so I'm Scott Yedley. We just met Russ and I'm Scott Yedley and I serve as the manager for a newer section in the Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity in Michigan for apprenticeship expansion. And uh, we have three of us here on the call this morning and with a half of another person, Anita, who's our administrator, we make up the 
apprenticeship expansion team currently for Michigan. So Carrie, you could introduce yourself. She was our reader for Governor Whitmer's proclamation. I'll pick on you next. Hey, good morning again, everyone. I am Carrie Sutton. I am apprenticeship analyst with the state of Michigan. Um, newer to the team, I still feel like I'm brand new. Uh, I'm actually in my position now for like 18 months, so about a year and a half. Um, still learning stuff, but really appreciate everybody's efforts to expand apprenticeship in Michigan and glad to be here today. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Kevin? Good morning, this is Kevin Chow with the state of Michigan, uh, the apprenticeship specialist. Um, and happy National Apprenticeship Week. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I'm going to kind of go in order left to right, but I'm going to pick up Tiffany first. If you have audio, Tiffany. I do. Good morning. I'm Tiffany Clausen. I am with the um, Department of Labor Office of Apprenticeship. I am based out of Battle Creek, but I cover the Battle Creek in Lansing offices. So a big chunk of the west half of the state. Thank you, Tiffany. Good morning. Mm -hmm. And Mark? Hi, everyone. I'm Mark DeCoster with Office of Apprenticeship out of Detroit. I handle southeastern Michigan and around Traverse City. Thank you, Mark. And good morning. And Rick? If you're... If you're talking, Rick, you are muted. And Rick may have stepped away. Liz? Hi, I'm Liz Robert Weston. I'm the Apprenticeship Success Coordinator with Oakland County, Michigan Works. Thank you for joining us, Liz, and good morning. Vet? Good morning, Yvette Hughes, Business Service Coordinator with Michigan Works, um, no lie, and a recent assigned um, Apprenticeship Coordinator for the Oakland County no lie office as well. So good morning, everyone. Excellent. Thank you. Um, good to meet you. I've, I've recognized the name, but we're glad to have you on board this morning. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Okay, Jay. Good morning, Jay Lanou. I'm the Apprenticeship Success Coordinator for Capillary Michigan Works. So we work with our employer partners in Eaton, Ingham, and Clinton counties. And thank, thank you, sponsors, for your part in expanding apprenticeships. Yeah, great. Thanks, Jay, and good morning, Brian. Good morning, everybody. My name is Brian Golden. I'm an apprenticeship specialist with Northwest Michigan Works. I'm covering the, we've got 10 counties and I'm covering the upper 10 counties. Nice to meet everybody. Excellent. Thank you, Brian, and good morning. Tina. Hello, my name is Tina Holden. I'm apprenticeship specialist for Northwest Michigan Works. I'm on Evelyn and Brian's team and I cover the five counties of our 10 uh, which include Manistee, Benzie, Kalkaska, Wexford, and Misaki counties. And thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for being here, Tina. I appreciate it. And Wanda, you're just in time for an introduction. Great. I am Wanda Bigelow with DST Michigan Works. Um, I cover Genesee, Shiawassee, Lapeer, Tuscola, Sanilac, and Huron counties. Thank you, Wanda. Thanks for joining us this morning for the recognition. Evelyn, please proceed. Good morning. I am Evelyn Split, and I, I serve as the Apprenticeship Success Coordinator, as well as the Manager of Apprenticeships and Business Resource Networks for Northwest Michigan Works. And thank you for having us this morning. You're welcome. Thank you for being here this morning. So I think that's everybody. Rick, if you have audio, I missed you earlier. And hard to say. Okay, so next on our agenda is, and thank you everybody for introducing yourselves for the kind words of recognition. I think Russ set a good tone. Um, just recognizing that, you know, without sponsors, there can't be registered apprenticeship. And so Thank you so much for embracing the model, for using the model, 
and for extending the benefits not only to your business but also to your employees as well. And so we're going to take a moment just to recognize you and if you're comfortable to do so you can just introduce yourself but then if you're also comfortable to do so you could share a little bit about the occupations that you're sponsoring and whatever else comes to your mind as we recognize you and we took a few words we're trying to capture a little bit that we could use in a press release so we appreciate your thoughts about why apprenticeship works for you but just low key whatever comes to mind we'll take a minute here and we'll do that by using this background just to kind of set the stage here and so it's a national apprenticeship week 8 to 14 I love the tagline, right? We are uh, building skills and expanding opportunity. And I just think that captures it really well. And we're thankful on the expansion team to be able to be inside the Department of Labor and economic opportunity because we think apprenticeship brings that opportunity both to employers and to apprentices. So just by the way that the logos came up, unfortunately, Wolf Line was first. I know B comes before W, but this uh, is the we're not, see, we're not seeing your screen if you're sharing. I am sharing. Thank you. Carrie. I'm not seeing it. I don't know if anybody else is, but I can't see it. <laughs> nope. Okay. Evelyn's saying no. She can't see it either. Well, you guys are missing out because I can see it. <laughs> well, we'd like to see it too, please. All right. I just told Carrie earlier this morning, I'm really not that good at sharing. I mean, I try to be kind, but. Now, maybe that looks better. Actually, I was I had a much better picture a minute ago. Now mine is really small. Looks great, Scott. <laughs> no. Thank you, Russ. So now it should be larger for you. Looks good. All right, so there's the tagline, building skills and expanding opportunity. I won't restate that. Wolfline Construction uh, happens to come up first on the list. And I know there's more locations, but that's the one we grabbed off the webpage for the Michigan office, if that's correct, Barbie. Good morning. Yes, that is correct. Um, I'm Barb Harmon, um, Director of Human Capital with Wolfline Construction. Uh, we are a high voltage electrical contractor that um, specializes in doing the fiber optic build within the energized space. So our typical customer is um, a utility. Right now we're working for Great Lakes Energy. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty big build. Um, we hire Class A linemen, and we start out as apprentices. Um, we look for individuals that have gone to a line school or um, a community college. Um, we use Alpena as far as recruiting from them and a couple line schools throughout the United States. So um, I've been working with Evelyn and Brian and um, they, they are just wonderful. It, we could not have this program up and running without, without them. Um, we started, last year with 10 apprentices and um, they all completed their first year and we will go into this year with 18 and I have 15 waiting to get in the program um, but due to um, the ratio they have to wait till we have more mentors so um, it's a great recruiting tool I, I had shared that with Evelyn um, I, I can't say enough about the apprentice program it's it's going to be our future these these young employees and um it's just it's just great i can't say enough about it wow thank you so much thanks um, for being up there yes absolutely so that's a significant number of apprentices um how many i'll call them in the occupation a line workers would you have yes so our workforce is is probably made up of about in the field, we probably have about 60. So we have 18 apprentices 
out of that 60. And then, like I had mentioned, an additional 15. So at some point, um, <laughs> we're going to have more apprentices than, uh, <laughs> um, than uh, senior, senior employees, which is, which is a great problem to have because they're going to be highly skilled workers and um, they'll work safely because they, they get a huge um, emphasis placed on safety. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much, Barb. And that's a, I mean, you're, you're sharing some of the primary benefits of registered apprenticeship, which is quality based on safety, right? So, um, which does make the ratio really important and which does make the program, as you mentioned, right, pretty safe. And one of the things that we really kind of delight in is being able to share and promote a program that's as high quality as registered apprenticeship is. So we feel like we have it really good, but we feel even better when you as an employer are explaining the benefits and reminding us the value that registered apprenticeship has. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you so much. And that's a pretty big impact you're having on the areas where your workers are and on your apprentices, right? That's life changing for 18 people with 15 people waiting, right? To Definitely. Experience that. Yeah, even if they don't stay with us, I mean, they're, they're gaining skills that they can take to um, any other company um, and just, you know, use what they've learned and um, grow wherever they land. So uh, definitely a great opportunity. Yeah, thank you so much, Barb. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And, Thank you. Well, we'll have some closing comments here in a minute. If you can think of anything else, that's perfect. And you're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yep. And next up is Boyne Highlands. Amanda, congratulations. Thank you. I'm Amanda Bomer, Human Resources Director at Boyne Highlands. Um, I got in touch with Evelyn. Ooh, it was probably in November. November, January of 2019, and uh, she worked with me. She's incredible. So this all should go to Evelyn um, with putting everything together to build a culinary sous chef apprenticeship program. Um, we wanted to bring talent to the, the local region um, and hopefully retain talent, which was part of our main goal of starting the apprenticeship program. Um, we've we are 11 months in currently. Uh, we had a few hiccups just with COVID and, and having to shut down our restaurant operations for a few months. Um, so we are working through some, some kinks of the first year, but I have a feeling the second year is going to be a lot smoother. And so we just look forward to growing the program and, and hopefully it creates the traction. Um, right now we have three registered apprentices at Boyne Highlands. I also assisted with Boyne Mountain and the Inner Bay Harbor. So uh, in Michigan, we have a total of seven registered apprentices across the Boyne, uh, Michigan locations. Um, and our goal is to get 10 for the next round uh, starting in January. So. Uh, we have about 50 culinary team members currently at Boyne Highlands, uh, and three of them are the apprentices, and we're hoping to put those apprentices into a more of a, a mentor -y for the next round as well. So growing their expansion uh, in the workforce and out as leaders. So it's, it's really fun, and it's been an interesting, uh, let's say, two years in the making. So thank you, and thank you again to Evelyn, because... I wouldn't have done it without her. So. Wow. Thank you, Amanda. Appreciate the overview and congratulations. It sounds like you're doing good. And um, basically, can you tell me just in general, the sous chef occupation, what, what does that apprentice learn? Well, they're going to learn basically um, everything from uh, safety and sanitation, basics, uses of knives, uh, baking, pastries, uh, mixing with fish and pork and chicken, um, anything that a chef would learn or anything that you would do at home, they would be learning a more advanced, uh, maybe uh, fancier, creative version of what we could do. Um, and then we provide that to our guests. 
So they're putting on special dinners to showcase what their um, talents are and where their passions are, as well as um, building menus for our team members to utilize during the winter. So it, it starts from costing of the foods to preparing it and everything that is surrounded by that. So it's a unique wow. apprenticeship and um, it's, it's pretty cool, so. Excellent, yeah, thank you so much. That's a great overview. So it's a very, it's like a commercialized version but has all of the safety and health aspects of a commercial program as well for culinary. So pretty impressive, yeah, thank you so much. And thank you for embracing the registered apprenticeship model for that education and training process. Congratulations, Evelyn. Sounds like the employers are pleased with your service. Any comments? Well, I have to say that both of these employers are very progressive. So they were on the ball with all the paperwork and up through the entire development process. They are amazing partners in so many different ways. I couldn't even list everything today. Um, first of all, with Wolfline, I have to say that Barb is very modest. Uh, what they do is amazing. They are bringing um, internet service to rural communities. So this is huge. These are underserved communities that do not have access to that. So what Wolfline is doing is really not only changing lives through their apprenticeship program, but also changing the lives across the nation. And these apprentices travel all over wherever those projects are. And this week, they actually celebrated National Apprenticeship Week as well. So they provided some very special incentives and recognition to all of their apprentices. So I have to congratulate Barb on that. Um, they've been great to work with. They provide all the documentation that we need. Um, just, just really amazing people. Um, and as far as the culinary program, Amanda has been, I, I can't even describe. I mean, the things that we have gone through over this past year, kind of the ups and downs and the ins and outs and all the collaboration that went into this program. I mean, it's extensive. Um, our educational partner with Chuck at NCMC, um, this program offers three credentials. So these apprentices are walking away with the sous chef credential from the American Culinary Federation, a hospitality certificate from North Central Michigan College, as well as the Department of Labor national credential. So it's very comprehensive. The apprentices are doing so well. Uh, the flexibility of the program to change right during COVID, um, that, was a, that was definitely a struggle, but the partnership was there and strong and it worked. So we're really looking forward to the next cohort. I think Amanda is just an amazing employer. They're very veteran friendly. And right now we're working on getting them registered and certified so that they can be a, a GI Bill certified employer. Very excited for both of these employers to be here today because they absolutely deserve the recognition, 100%. Thank you, Evelyn. Um, well said and wow, what a, what a way to recognize employers and not only to mention that they're progressive, but then to back it up by actually explaining every way that they are progressive. And I realize we're just hearing a little bit of it. So that's pretty special. One thing that comes to my mind, I just want to mention is that um, we are going to be sharing the recording with the Leo communications team. And so um, with your permission, and I'll do that with just a head knob, I, I don't say head knob, I don't see Barb. But it's uh, oh, if they could contact you if there's any clarification needed on any of the comments that you made. Okay, thank you. Thank you each as well for you, then Evelyn. And then um, I think the last slide is, says congratulations. You don't have to see it because we're back in the team. Thank you for doing that, Christine or Kimberly. Or Kimberly there. 
And if we peek at the agenda, which I'm going to do, you won't see it, I don't think. Um, it's going to say that we are ready for closing comments. And um, Russ, actually, I've got you in a, in a spot here for an additional congratulations comment, if you're willing. I just want to make a couple of comments about the two companies that were flying. Thank you very much for sharing the We don't hear you, Russ. Hear me now. Just the can you hear me now part. I got uh, me uh, you're hey, the hey, host muted me. Yeah, the host actually turned off your video, and now we can hear you pretty good. Okay, good. Uh, so we can hear you great, Russ. <laughs> good. So I just wanted to make it. I was start to say. I'll uh, start out with Wolfline. Um, Wolfline. Uh, I live in the rural area, so if you wiggle your right thumb, that's where I'm at, Vassar, and. Uh, uh, the internet for rural communities in in uh, Michigan is uh, very very well needed. So I'm glad to hear what you're doing up there in northern Michigan. Wish you could come down in our neck of the woods because we have that same issue here. And also, I love your comment there that you understand that uh, you're training these people. They may or may not stay, but just to let you know that we know apprentices that go through our program five years after. They're there, 85% of them are still on the job. So uh, thank you very much. Um, the Boyne Highland uh, Culinary Program there, uh, thank you, Evelyn, and, and the group up there. If those on the phone at, uh, on this call have never been at Bay Harbor, I, I, I wish you would go up there and eat because Bay Harbor is fantastic. I've been there several, several times. You know, the, top notch and I'm sure the program that Boyne Highlands and Bay Harbor put together here is going to be second to none. I have been advocating culinary arts programs since I've been a state director uh, for 10 years. I know it's uh, well, well needed. As, as we all know, a lot of us sat there and watched some nights. There's nothing on TV, the, uh, the culinary arts channel <laughs> and <laughs> plays and everybody. And it's truly great to hear that we've got this first class program, especially with Northwest up there too in their program. Uh, we have actually very good programs coming out of our CTE centers that get credit for previous experience. One's out of Kent County that goes up there in Northwest. So uh, looking forward to hearing more about this program and expanding. And uh, the last thing I'll say is uh, congratulations, Evelyn, for what you're doing up there in Northwest. Um, again, with our limited uh, ATRs, we need people like you across the state of Michigan, and that's where the ASCs are really helping us. I also want to thank Mark DeCoster uh, for uh, working what he's doing with your program, helping you. You're a great intermarry, and uh, we all ought to wish that all the intermarries could uh, do the job that you're doing up there. And the last thing is uh, thank you for uh, National Apprenticeship Week. We hope... Next year, this time, we can be in a face-to-face -face meeting, but under the conditions is great. Thanks, Leo. Thank you uh, for the sharing the proclamation uh, from Gretchen Whitmer, and uh, thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome, Russ. That's quite a list of thank yous, and we want to extend our appreciation back to you and your team as well to say thank you for all that you do, and I know that you are incredibly small staffed for the number of apprenticeship programs and apprentices that we support and grow in Michigan, and so your efforts are truly appreciated, 
And it is amazing when you talk about being in the lead for Region 5 that we do so much with so few. So um, thanks for your thanks. And any other closing comments? Um, anybody? The mics can be opened up. I would um, suggest and take any feedback on this session from any of the ASCs, which for employers, that's our apprenticeship success coordinators that are located um, in each region across the state. So that would be similar to the Evelyn and her team that you work with. Uh, we intend to do these recognitions on a regular basis. I don't know whatever makes sense whether it might be once a quarter to start with, but just to kind of recognize and pull together the employers that are sponsoring programs and just give them a little opportunity to do what they did today, tell us about the benefits of that program and then try and turn that into a Michigan wide at least press release that shares some of the benefits to the actual employer from the program. So. Any comments in closing? I do have to mention, um, it's, it's absolutely wonderful to work with Mark DeCoster. He's very helpful as we are expanding apprenticeships up here. We have you know, a very rural region and it's wide, very widespread. <laughs> so um, he, you know, he's on the ball, he looks at our documents, he's getting those approved. And the feedback that he offers is absolutely invaluable as we go through this process. So we could not have this kind of success without Mark's um, advocacy and his assistance. So thank you, Mark, very much. And thank you, Russ. You're welcome. I appreciate that. It's good to be part of the team. Okay, anybody else? Hearing no one else, um, I would ask if you wouldn't mind, Barb and Amanda, if you could hang on just a second, maybe, and Evelyn, I want to make sure that we have the right contact information that you would like to be represented in a press release. And so if you could hang on just a minute, we'll dismiss everyone else and thank you for your attendance this morning. And again, happy National and Michigan Apprenticeship Week. Thank you.